we think about it as the biggest business conference that attracts Latino communities to come and learn and seek opportunities. I'm Matt Hagman, and this is Opportunity Miami, a podcast about people and ideas shaping Miami's economic future. Hispanic business owners make up the fastest growing market, yet rank among the most underfunded, especially when it comes to early stage funding. How can we change that? Today, we are joined by Laura moreno Lucas, a partner at Latitude Ventures, which is leading an effort to upend the status quo. In August, Latitude Ventures announced a $100 million funding round with a focus on investing in early stage Hispanic owned companies with high growth potential. Laura joined us to discuss. Laura Moreno Lucas, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for joining us. So, want to start with this. So, August of 2022, just a few months ago, Latitude Ventures closed a hundred million dollar fund, the largest fund focused exclusively on Latino and Latina entrepreneurs in the United States and the world, I guess. What are you focusing on and what do you hope to achieve with those funds? Yeah, of course. Well, well, thank you for the question. Um, I think we have to start with our founding partners. Um, so Sol Trujillo and Gary Acosta, mm -hmm. who are the founding partners of Latitude and Latitude Ventures. Sol Trujillo is um, one of the first U.S. Latinos to lead a Fortune 200 company and then later went on to lead um, Telstra. As he was becoming this well-known um, entrepreneur and then came back to the U.S., he realized the impact that Latinos were having in the U.S. Um, from a growth perspective, from an economic perspective, and also, he noticed that there was a specific narrative that was being painted across the Latino community that wasn't that positive. And so one of the things he wanted to do was he wanted to look at this from a data standpoint. So he mm -hmm. launched the, uh, he commissioned the report for the Latino Donor Collaborative, where if you look at the Latino Do Donor Collaborative report, it gives all of the the impact that Latinos are having on the US economically. But even though we have, we are making such a big, we have such a big footprint and we are achieving many things like building businesses faster than any other corp for here in the US, we aren't receiving the capital for it. So Sol Trujillo being the man that he is, was like, I am going to address this by starting a fund um, and that was what started Latitude Ventures alongside Gary Acosta. They started with a smaller fund that invested in five entrepreneurs and those five entrepreneurs skyrocketed. Three of them have already had a successful exits. And so out of that success, then he had a vision to do something bigger because he always wants to do things bigger. And that's when he set out to, uh, to, you know, start this $100 million fund, which we just closed. And we worked together um, to, to close the fund and bring in the fantastic companies that you see as part of our portfolio today. So and just for the timeline, so 2019 was mm -hmm. when that initial fund was put together. And that, that was a couple million dollars, right? Was it a $2 correct. million dollar fund? Yeah, yeah. That's $2 correct. million dollar fund. Mm -hmm. You come on in January of 2022, yes. um, August of 2022, you've raised $100 million. Yes. Um, and so now have this new, much, much bigger fund. So on the one hand, um, you know, as we're seeing, you know, Latino businesses, you know, by one measure create 50% of all new employer-based businesses, that is businesses that are more than one person, um, yet get less than 2% of all early stage VC. So to your point, obviously, what is that scream? Opportunity. But let's talk about sort of why is this so? Yeah, that's a great question because I think that there's, it's a two-prong approach, right? And I think the first thing is that generally when 
uh, Latinos are building business, they don't even know that venture capital is a route that they could access early on, mm. um, primarily because it's not something that ha they've been presented with or, um, or they don't have the knowledge around. And that stems from, again, just uh, having more education about these opportunities at the earlier stage. I think it's become more common over the last five years as you're seeing different accelerator programs, different educational programs happening at universities that are creating innovation, that are creating entrepreneurship programs. But in the past, it hasn't been a direct focus and, and it hasn't been a, a focus for you know state schools or other schools that a big cohort of the Latino community is in. Today, we're seeing a bigger cohort of the Latino community now at elite schools such as Harvard, MIT, and Stanford, yeah. but that is not something that, again, was uh, presented in the past. So the education behind, hey, there's this actual system in venture that actually supports pre-seed companies, and that's pre-seed where you're just having an idea uh, and you're trying to prove out if there's a product market fit and those types of uh, those types of companies get backing and you can actually access that through venture. That's not something that our community um, ha had a has had access to in the past or even knew that that was a channel to access. So the first prong is education, understanding. And the second prong is a network, right? When you have a network that um, can bring you into those communities where you um, are introduced to uh, angel investors, venture capital, or these other channels, then it makes it much easier. So no, traditionally, it's not a network that we're tapped into. Um, and so, But now, because you're seeing many emerging managers that are either um, Latino, Latina, or Black or Brown, we are the ones that are reaching out to this community and saying, hey, there's so much opportunity here, it's just being overlooked. And I know because I went through that process myself and, ha and you know, had many doors shut in the past, but was able to raise capital um, through untraditional channels, um, through people who looked like me, through you know, other avenues that, uh, like I'm saying, not traditional. So, but now because I know about that experience, I'm able to tap into the community and I see those opportunities that have been overlooked. So with the fund now with, you know, $100 million um, raised um, as in thinking about both around education, awareness, and then access, um, how are you go about going about sort of doing that? Um, because as you pointed out already, it's one thing to you know, identify an entrepreneur who's coming out of Stanford. It's a whole nother thing, and here I'm sitting in Miami, to you know, a student coming out of Miami-Dade College, which graduates you know, more Hispanic students than any campus-based college in the country. How are you connecting with those entrepreneurs? Yes, and actually we have a lot of connections into those ecosystems because I think the first thing is, is trust. You know, trusting that we have built a platform that we're inviting those types of um, those types of small business owners and entrepreneurs to come and learn. And so I believe that that's what Latitude has created. Uh, we think of, about it as as the biggest business conference that attracts Latino communities um, from business to media to entertainment and again, venture. And so we built this platform over the past few years who has, who has gained the trust of our community to come and learn and seek opportunities at, in our, in our, at our conference and, and throughout the year. So that's the first thing. And because of that, they're reaching out to us. They're saying, hey, I wanna learn more about what you're building here. I wanna learn more about how do I start to educate myself on accessing these channels that traditionally haven't been available to me. And so we're providing that platform of education and then giving them other resources if we can't help them now. 
So in a way, the conference is sort of the wide funnel right now. That's how people are learning about latitude venture capital. That's how they're reaching out. But that's the primary way in which that you're connecting with entrepreneurs who eventually you could invest in. Yes, that's what built everything, right? That's where we started based on the conference. Now, of course, you know, reaching into some of these more strategic channels, like what you mentioned, um, you know, the, the closed door communities. Uh, so I, that's my background. Um, you know, I ha I've been an advisor to 500 startups. I've worked with tech stars. I've worked with the founder ecosystem with my experience at NASDAQ that also uh, lent me a lens into the later stage companies, the growth companies and the partnerships with a lot of the VCs around Silicon Valley. And so that access has allowed me to go into sort of these closed door communities and also bring that knowledge base to Latitude, the conference, and have that be a pillar where we bring those communities together and offer that education so that it's really transparent and gives everybody the opportunity regardless of where you come from. So having closed the fund in August of 2022, how many companies have you invested in so far? How much of the funds have you deployed? How long um, from this round do you think that you'll be identifying and investing in entrepreneurs? Yes. So we've been deploying along the way as we were fundraising. So last year we deployed quite a bit of capital. Um, to date, I believe we've invested in 31 companies um, since the close of, of the fund. So again, because we were deploying along the way, um, to date we have uh, around 31 companies, which I believe is around 34 million in deployed capital. Got it. And so, and by the way, of course, you know, this is Opportunity Miami, and uh, there are a couple of Miami companies that have been part of, of, of your funding. Who are they? Yes, I um, love Olivia Ramos from Deep Block. She's fantastic. She's been incredible to work with over the past two years. I was introduced to her by 500 Startups, again, an very ecosystem cool. that I'm very tied into. And then we also have Gustavo from Baby Sparks, who is also in Miami, and he's an incredible founder as well. And he's building a, a community of educators and an early opportunity for parenting. So we have those two, and, and then we have many more that we're talking to as, as we get going um, deeper that's, into That's Miami. awesome. For so long, obviously, there was you know one or two or just a handful of places that were the primary centers of innovation, and we're getting the lion's share of venture capital supporting, you know, the most promising new startups. You know, what we've seen more and more is, is sort of this distribution of innovation where we're seeing entrepreneurs and money that is going to many, many more places. Obviously a big effort here in Miami. As you are now um, deploying, you know, the, the, the 100 million that you've raised in this round with Latitude Venture Capital, how are you thinking about that in terms of sort of the, the distribution of, of funding and innovation? How much of your funding and how are you connecting with people, say, of course, where you are right now in SF, versus connecting with entrepreneurs in cities and communities you know, across the country? Yeah, so I think it, it goes back to our, our thesis on you know, finding the best uh, entrepreneurs that are, are scaling and building businesses that are Latino and Latina led that are here in the US. And of course, Miami being such a, a welcoming city to a large population of Latino and Latinas, it makes sense that we would, we would have connectivity there and are seeking some of those best and brightest. And I think then we go into other ecosystems that are supportive of nurturing that type of, of growth. Um, we have several founders in Austin, and then of course, up through California, uh, in New York. Um, and as you can think, all of the really uh, great ecosystems that, that are supportive of diversity and really championing uh, opportunity with Latino and Latina entrepreneurs. So for me, it's staying close to those um, different uh, local municipalities that have programming 
around how to empower those communities and, and then offering education and resources through our platform on how we can better partner with them. Latitude, the conference is going to be in Miami. So as we start to get ready for that already, you know, now we're looking at ways to partner with Miami. We're looking at ways to partner with many ecosystems that will be in attendance there to really bolster that for, um, for that local ecosystem. It's like aligning ourselves where those opportunities are being championed and helped. The Latitude Conference will be September of 2023 in Miami. Correct. Do I have that right? Okay. What prompted you coming to Miami? Well, that's a great question because there's actually two reasons for it. Um, so Latitude, the conference, has um, sets, uh, different partners than Latitude Ventures. And Latitude, the conference, Emilio Estefan is one of the partners of latitude so mm -hmm. i know he's <laughs> he's there in miami and he's, oh, he's always royalty in miami. He's, yeah. he's always champion for for things to happen there so he's a big advocate for the community so of course he was very excited to bring all the energy that's been created on the west coast to the east coast that's one of the reasons and the obvious second reason is that there's a big thriving community that's growing in Miami from both the investor side, uh, you know, there's a lot of companies that are moving there. And obviously there's a lot of founders that are now innovating in Miami. So that is the other big opportunity that's happening. And so we want to be able to be at the forefront of that and also bring all of our talent and all of our resources that we can um, to partner with uh, with Miami and in the local community. What are some sort of, you know, top of mind lessons that you often impart from your own experience as an entrepreneur? Yes, I, I mean, I have so many because on being an entrepreneur is such a roller coaster ride. And it's it's something you unique that you have to have as a person to to persevere through all the ups and downs and the and the no's, because there's a lot of no's uh, that you get and, and people maybe just don't understand the, the problem that you're solving. And so as I was going through that journey, and, and I share this a lot with our portfolio companies, as well as any companies that I, that I meet or that I mentor, I think the most important thing you need to do is cherish your customer and understand your customer and grow with that customer because at the end of the day, it's your customer that brings you the sales. It's your customer that you're solving the problem for. It's your customer that is potentially going to get you to the next stage of growth. Aside from taking capital from investors, my family, I would say, as they'd say in Spanish, ¿Qué va a comprar eso? Like, who's going to buy that? Like, you know, nobody's going to. And I, and I would say, of course, everybody wants, you know, some of the things that I have to offer. So I was always trying to prove that people wanted what I had through just growing the business on, on sales. And um, that sales mindset and really understanding my customer is how I was able to really get it to scale initially that then brought in interest from investors and looked at my business and said, hey, this is actually something that's viable because you know, there's, there's revenue, there's growth, and people actually love her product. And that is the best validation that you can get is from your clients and from your customers to be able to, to tap into you know, investors and, and, and VC funding. Now, for entrepreneurs um, who want to connect with you, who are like, hey, you know, um, <laughs> I want to talk to Laura. I've got this great startup, um, and and they want to get on your radar ahead of the conference here in Miami in September of 2023. How do they do that? And what is that profile that you would be um, that would sort of meet the the sweet spot that would win your attention? Yes. Yeah, so so we invest year round. We we highlight our investments at the conference and then we encourage, you know, other founders to come meet us and learn more. 
but you know, we're investing now. <laughs> the The best way to do it is is really to go through through our website, um, put in if you believe that you're somebody um, that meets our qualifications, then you can take a look at our submission form. It outlines all of the things that we need right away. And then that gets brought into um, to our team and we look through it and you know if we if you meet our initial qualifications what which are that you are a u.s latino um latino or latina your business is here um and that you still have 25 percent ownership in the company and that you're high growth and that you have some product market fit those are the things we look at it can be it's industry agnostic uh, so we look at a lot of different industries. I will say we have a lot of CPG companies today, a lot of fintech companies, um, and then we have a lot of enterprise and SaaS companies in our portfolio. But it really depends on you know, who you are. Are you somebody that's an expert in your field? Are you a founder that has such deep domain expertise that you know more than your, your competitor? And then the second part is, as a founder, can we help you, right? Uh, re regardless of yeah. maybe you have the best idea, but we want to be able to help. We don't want to just be capital. We have a lot of different ways that we can support them, and we want to make sure that we can help them and scale them quickly, faster, stronger than their competition. And we have some incredible partners on our team, um, you know, from Sol Trujillo to Oscar Munoz, former CEO of United Airlines, to Gary Acosta, to Kenny Blanco and myself, where we all bring different uh, strengths to the table. And if one of us can really help catalyze the company, then absolutely we'll look to invest. And so those are the ways that we're thinking about how to how to invest. It's, not, it's more than just capital. It's really strategizing on how to help you scale to the next phase of your growth because it, it only gets harder as you right. as you reach different milestones but we will we want to make that journey easier and i think that with all of our expertise we can really guide them you're obviously trying to lead the way in solving what is a really big and important problem uh, and that is that you know as we think about latino and latina entrepreneurs um you know as we said at the outset you know that uh that creating some 50% of new employer-based uh, businesses, that is businesses of more than one person, uh, and yet getting less than 2% of venture capital. As we think about sort of the three takeaways to do that, what do you think, and going back on just to the last you know, 30 minutes of our conversation, that really should be top of mind? Is it around access, education, and of course, you know, funding with you raising the hundred million dollars. Um, what should be those things that should be top of mind of building that that truly diverse ecosystem that you know we aspire to build here in Miami, but um, you know want to see in communities across the country. Yeah, I think it it, it's, it starts with understanding um, the ecosystem, as I shared uh, with you. You know, I think traditionally. Um, as we discussed, most VCs go to the, the elite schools or go to these channels that um, have been traditional, like the YCs and the accelerator programs that are predominant. It's going to untraditional ecosystems, whether it's state schools, whether it's community schools, whether it's um, programming that empowers uh, uh, these types of entrepreneurs, like the Black Ambition Program that I'm also a yeah. part of. Um, so it, it's finding those those channels and learning about those types of, of founders. And then if, if you don't have uh, maybe the opportunity to invest as an investor at the time where these founders are, it's great to always stay connected. So I think always connecting and guiding them as they're going through their journey, because you never know when you can help. Maybe at this point, you know, it's someone that you're that you're connected to, but you you can't help them at the moment. But you know, you never know when that opportunity to stay connected on both sides. Founders should absolutely take this advice as well. You know, I when I was going through and I was a founder, that was the biggest 
learning that I had is that you never know when that opportunity is going to come where where an investor can invest. So you just want to keep everybody updated. You want to stay connected and that will help drive that and always ask for help. And that would be the last thing. It's, you know, helping other people, whether it's on the investor side or the founder side is the most important because I think right now the way i see the landscape is we all want the same goal we all want to help our community um, achieve some of the successes that other communities have primarily had and so as we come together as one helping each other will be the biggest change that we can make and really partnering with each other as we're trying to reach these bigger goals for our community so that, that is I, what I think that we want to do at Latitude. It's not just about, you know, our fund. It's about us being here to work with others and really partner and share in these, um, in these opportunities so that we can lift them up together. Well, Laura Moreno-Lucas, thank you very much for the time. We look forward to seeing you in Miami. Thank you. Thanks. I, I enjoyed the conversation and thank you so much for having me. Opportunity Miami is powered by the Miami-Dade Beacon Council. Please subscribe, like, and review our podcasts. It really helps. You can also reach us with your story ideas and feedback at next at opportunity.miami. Thanks so much for joining.